to our lockdown session number one. Just me and Dale in the house tonight. It's very quiet here. cold here right now it's really, really cold yeah. yeah it's oh. about eight, eight degrees which mm. you know maybe it's not that cold for for belgrade but um I, I also live on this on the on the sea so the the way the wind comes in off the water it's really freezing and and raining out there it's uh, like night time it's um it's the beginning of winter time here yeah Belgrade, Serbia have been through a lot in the last 30 years. I mean, in Australia, nothing like this has ever happened. Uh, there's never been a kind of lockdown of any kind, you know. There's never been an invasion. So 
I think here the psychic shock is probably, you know, more shocking than than it is in in the Balkans. In terms of touring, I mean, normally up until now in my life, I've been on tour on the road like six months in a year, pretty much every year. And this will be the first year where I actually spend so much time in in Australia in in one block. So it's a totally different situation for me to figure out what to do next. And <laughs> it's funny because everywhere it feels further away now. When the pandemic first started, I think um, touring artists like me thought, oh, this is a, a problem, but it will go away in six months or something, you know? And of course, as we learn more and more, as the drama unfolds around us, um, it could take a real lot longer than six months, definitely. I think that um, last night I was talking to Chris Eggman from Dirt Music and he, and his opinion was that uh, there wouldn't be touring as such in Europe until the second half of next year. So it would take probably one more year for everybody to work out a way to be able to travel without long quarantine periods and so much complication. But I think what we all feel now is that we're living in a science fiction movie where the rules can change, you know, um, the, the story can change in a, in a kind of radical way um, that you can't predict. And it can do so very suddenly because the changes of the last two months have been really quick, haven't they? Well, actually, my plans were to release a new record by my band, True Spirit. And we finished the record in the end of February. So pretty much exactly when we were preparing with labels to release the record, everybody went, stop. We have to wait a little bit to see how this is going to play out in terms of our ability to be able to... Um, send physical records around um, on it depends on if record stores you know can open it depends on a lot of things um, and we're three months into this uh, science fiction story now and no one's really clear but what I what you do see is artists everywhere trying different initiatives to release their work. So I've seen some really great new records come out on Bandcamp. So they're only digital releases. And I think that's, that's a great thing. And obviously the artists feel a sense of urgency to get their music and their words out to their audience. Um, so they're forcing new ways of uh, releasing themselves, le releasing their own music um, that probably they would not have done before pandemic. With live music, um, you, you really what you're doing is you engage with the atmosphere of, of everybody present in, in, that, in that room, in that place. And together with those people, a kind of energy is created. You know, that's, that was the whole power of performance events and it's um it's a very powerful drug <laughs> for everyone involved that's why people keep going back to see favorite artists and, and want to go out to concerts and it's one of the reasons why you know people like me keep touring as well um, because it's a magical thing that you can only create between humans in a physical space you know and mtv you know it's that's all kind of plastic. Talking to some musicians, they've, they've said to me flat out, I don't think I can be a professional musician anymore. I can't actually do this job. I've got, I've got a family, I've got bills to pay. Um, there is no touring coming up. And um, I'm gonna have to find other work. And that's a really hard thing to, to hear from, from people. So I'm, I'm also worried that um, 
people that everyone who works in the arts industries are going to find themselves forced to look for new ways to earn money just to survive in in the pandemic world in the next world At some point during the day I'll be thinking yeah no there's going to be a way through all this and we're going to be back um, doing international travel and live music performances like in a year from now or something like that and then something might trigger me and I'll start to think actually maybe that isn't going to happen you know like there's been a lot of surprises and so that's that creates a kind of deep anxiety and I think um, it's interesting that this anxiety has been shared by so many people at the same time all around the world it's um, it makes me think about the power of positive thought and um, the power of meditation and the power of prayer as well like so you feel I feel this kind of uh, world psychic health swinging in in the balance of these things but it's it's not like we don't have any tools or or resistance we do but um, it's happening it's a unique event because it's happening everywhere at the same time and it's really interesting talking to people from different places in the world about what's happening there because I think most of us uh, it's difficult to understand exactly what's happening in our own town our own city let alone what's happening in in towns and cities in other cultures that have got you know big political and social differences um, it's hard to imagine when it started it, it made me think a lot about um, the Bible and it still does <laughs> you know it's kind of got this epic dimension to it which makes me think you know of the plagues of um, of Moses or something like that
about other things has become less. And um, that's also changing the intellectual atmosphere a little bit. Uh, I don't tune in to the mainstream media at all since this started. I just um, read what I choose to off the internet. But every time I do see like Australian television, it's terrifying <laughs> the way that they are relentlessly um, sending negative uh, news messages and then trying to offset that with positive forms of sponsored advertising. Like a very crude attempt to micromanage the, the psychic health of, of the country through television. It's, um, that's what I, that's kind of what I was getting at with my metaphor about living in a science fiction, um, film, because of course this isn't science fiction, it's absolutely real, but, um, the way that mainstream media is being used is, I find it pretty, pretty frightening. Yeah. And I wonder who is watching <laughs> and what it's doing to them. Kokorobi We had art, performance art, moving around the world, spreading ideas, connecting people. It was a counterbalance to the kind of state media. And in pandemic time, you know, we have this is a this is a problem. You know, we have to recognize so we are being forced to find new ways to connect and to want to be connected together and it's all through the internet there is no other way so we've become internet um citizens um for now we have to be really patient because it's just not going to happen fast and um i think that doing as much um creation and meditation as we can right now is a good idea i don't think it's a good time to take a holiday from that stuff you know, I think that the situation might ch might be different for six months from now. It might be a real lot better. It could also be worse. So we need to, you know, survive and adapt. Absolutely. I'm, I'm thinking also of a bigger project, um, which is a project that reflects the, the totality of, of global pandemic. It's not a, about pandemic, but it's um, global in scope. So in a weird way, more than ever before, I'm thinking in terms of international connections in order to generate new work and new creativity that we could not do on our own in isolation in our respective cultures. There needs to be that outreach. And I think it's um, also part of the political spiritual balance of things. Um, and uh, I feel that's the role that, that you know we're called upon to play. See the lifeboats on the water The big ships moving through What I want to do is create something that has a life of its own. So I'd like to have a group of maybe 10 or, or 12, 15 collaborators working on it. So it's like a group effort. And um, obviously people are placed wherever they are around the world. And... I wanted to connect to traditional forms of music and traditional forms of singing. Very depressing and also very inspiring and giving us a lot of time to meditate on our own thoughts and think through how we feel about the changes that are happening. Um, like I said before, it's a, it's a really amazing moment to be alive. It's just it's pretty terrifying, but it's, um, here we are. Everybody gotta make peace with a higher power, with a higher power.
telescopic eye Big bro axis Google eye Looking down on me In science and in wonder And I turn to you To save me from myself Radio 